We are live. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. We'll be starting here in a few minutes. Hope you're having a great night. Get ready for the freezing rain tomorrow. We got about four to, four to eight hours of freezing rain coming tomorrow. Oh, it sounds like the East Coast, all right. <laughs> Yeah, we had a bit of freezing rain in Toronto yesterday, but yeah, you'd probably call that a, a drizzle of rain. Drizzle, yeah. yeah, pretty much. So you were over in Ireland for how long? I was there for eleven days total. Brought a group of uh, twenty people, and then right. I'm heading back again on Saturday and going over for some tour operator workshops and a conference in Killarney. So it's good to see people back traveling and business travel yeah. and and a lot of you know we saw a lot of guests from all over in many of the towns and cities as well which was great perfect all right we're getting a few people on here now so we'll just give them a couple more minutes have you gone live on um zoom yet other than no so the the appointments on zoom and then we do it uh we broadcast it on no, I know, I know, but I know you're in. Um, just making sure you're in, because I haven't seen people join on Zoom yet. So I'm making sure you're not still in practice mode. Oh no, it's all in. Uh, it's all on uh, Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So everything's on Facebook. We're the only ones on Zoom. Exactly. Ah, yeah. sorry. They can see us. We can't see them. Perfect. Perfect. We got a few more people on here. All right, everybody, we're going to get started. It's 701 on my computer time, and I want to welcome you to our Discover Ireland with Target Tours. And we have Jonathan Sargent from Royal Irish Tours with us tonight. Uh, we, are, we have two great programs or two great departures that we're doing for uh, Ireland this year with Royal Irish Tours, and we're very excited. This, is, uh, this has been a long time coming, right, Jonathan? So we've scheduled this back in uh, 2020. So we had a, a, a almost sold out departure back in 2020 for, for, uh, for September. And then we, uh, of course, everybody knows what happened. And we rescheduled for 2021 and then 2022. So we are hoping that uh, this third time's a charm and then we'll be uh, all traveling to Ireland in September. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, John. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Delighted to be here. So, so John, sorry, anything yeah, else? So go ahead. Yeah, so we're all ready to go. So you can start the presentation. Perfect. And so thank you everyone for joining. Delighted to be here. I know we did a presentation a few months ago or when was that, John? Six or eight months ago at this stage. Yeah, probably. Back uh, then. And then, yeah, pretty much straight after that, your first departure sold out and the second one now almost sold out. So that is uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, so a bit about Royal Irish Tours are, who John has partnered with for this tour. We are Canada's leading tour operator selling Ireland, um, and all we sell is Ireland, England, Scotland, and Wales. So we really are experts in the destination. We have our own office in Dublin, so we contract out all the hotels directly, and our team on the ground, you know, their whole job is just to build those relationships on the ground in Ireland. They go out and experience the product. We have a great group of uh, drivers and guides, most have been with us 10 plus years. Uh, very much a family business as well. So our owner, Ian Duffy, seen in the picture there, and his son, Connor, both work full-time. Uh, we have another Duffy working in our Dublin office. And um, so very much a family business and offices in Canada and Ireland, as I mentioned. Um, so just an update on the current restrictions in Ireland, uh, I should say the lack of restrictions. So uh, as of March 6th, uh, all COVID-related restrictions have been moved for travel to Ireland. So no requirements to get into the country. Uh, you don't even have to fill in a passenger locator form, which was a very annoying form you had to fill in up until March 6th. So that's a uh, very encouraging news uh, for travel to Ireland. Then obviously, as of April 1st, many of you may be aware that no, no longer requiring uh, antigen or PCR tests to return to Canada. 
um, which is very encouraging as well for travel. And um, just uh, the other elephant in the room, the Ukraine situation. Uh, I know a lot of people, um, you know, when they think of Europe, they think of everywhere. But Ireland is a little island out in the Atlantic. It's as close to Newfoundland as it is to Russia. Um, so obviously we are keeping an eye on the situation there, but um, all our tours are still going uh, full steam ahead from May. Um, actually, when I was in Ireland a couple of re weeks ago, it was great to see we did a hotel visit in Downpatrick. Uh, in County Down and uh, we went in to see the snug bar in the hotel and the guy's like oh sorry there's a there's a little bit of um, you know traffic when you go in just have a look and it, basically the room was full of bags and boxes he was collecting um, for Ukraine and uh, his was one of the drop-off points in town for people to leave stuff clothes and blankets and food and um, so a lot of people in the tourism industry in Ireland are doing all they can for Ukraine but and um, in terms of travel to Ireland, um, it's still fully safe and we're not um, foreseeing any, any change to that. Perfect. And Jonathan, you mentioned earlier uh, in our conversation about some of your departures in September are doing very well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you were, you were a very uh, great foresight to take two departures um, from us because now any, like, it's really difficult to even get space for a lot of the, the dates in September. So um, we have added some extra departures of a slightly different tour called the Heritage Royal. Um, so if you know people can't get onto your tour, if it sells out, and we do have a few additional departures. But yes, yeah, September uh, and October, uh, it's always a very encouraging sign for us because September is always one of our busiest months. But to see that uh, mostly sold out so early in the season uh, is very encouraging news for, for travel as well. Perfect. And then, yeah, as in case you, I, I'm sure many of you are traveling yourselves, but people are traveling again. Um, I was actually in Ireland two weeks ago with a group um, of travel advisors actually from Canada. Uh, so there was 20 of us, did a lovely eight day, seven night trip. I actually took this picture myself. That's not a fake picture in the background. We did get lovely sunny weather at the Cliffs of Moher, and I had to share this picture because it's not every day. Um, you get to see uh, the full extent of the cliffs. Uh, it's actually really nice when it's misty and, and it's very mythical with some, with some fog and things. Um, but this is the clearest I've ever seen it, so it really was amazing. Um, but it was great to see Belfast, we stayed the first two nights, was really busy. Uh, it was just great to see so many people. People were like, do you guys have an accent to, to the group uh, that we had with us? And they were just really excited that there were Canadians back and um, exploring Ireland as well. So they've certainly missed the North American visitors, in particular the Canadians, over the last two years. And um, so just some of the reasons of why Ireland is such a popular destination, especially uh, for people in Canada, of course, and um, very easy to get to, only a hop, skip and a jump across the pond. And um, but really is the people, not perhaps not the reason you go, but the reason you want to go back to those friendly people you meet, the Cade Mila Falcha we have, the 100,000 welcomes you receive, uh, upon arrival in Ireland and whether you're lost, uh, you know, in a town and you ask someone for directions, you might not understand what they say, uh, but they'll try their best to get you on your way. They'll probably ask what you have for breakfast, what your last name is, what you're doing there. They're not being nosy. They're just genuinely friendly and really want to, to get to know who you are. And you really will be blown away by the hospitality of the Irish. The other reason, perhaps not why you go to Ireland, but why you want to come back is the food. We really pride ourselves on provenance. Everything you're eating is sourced locally, generally 10 or 15 kilometers um, from where you're having it. Obviously, being an island um, similar to PEI, uh, we have lots of incredible seafood, um, but also all our animals are grass fed at 12 months of the year grazing, which results in really tender uh, meat, but also some fantastic dairy products, cheeses. Our butter is famous around the world, not so famous in Canada because of the restrictions on bringing dairy into Canada. Uh, not too much Irish butter in Canada, but you'll be blown away even by the butter in Ireland. Uh, and then, of course, lots of people know our beverages, the likes of Jameson and Bushmills, of course, world famous whiskies. And we're also very famous for cider. Uh, gin has really taken off in recent years. And if you like a local beer, uh, that's fantastic as well. You might be in a hotel or pub and see a beer on tap that you've never heard of and it's likely you know 10 or 15 miles down the road for that brewery so that's something else that's really taken off in recent years perfect these are just a couple of pictures i took of my food uh as you know people do take pictures of their food these days uh, so i got a nice irish coffee in one of the hotels there on the left uh, which is absolutely delicious nice way to warm up after a chilly day 
out and about exploring. And then that was a, a, car, a lovely piece of card on a nice lemon risotto I had in another restaurant. So you will get really, really nice um, food on this tour. Uh, the Manor Royal is our higher end tour. And um, so all the, the dining inclusions, even in the hotels, are really exceptional and three course meals, which you'll thoroughly enjoy. Of course, music, another huge part of our culture. And they say there's a pub for everyone in Ireland. So if you're looking for a quiet drink or a cup of tea uh, and just to chat with a friend, uh, you can certainly find that. But if you're looking for live music and entertainment, um, you can certainly find that in most towns and cities throughout Ireland as well. Uh, for example, when you're in Killarney, um, there's probably 10 or 12 really good pubs and of those 12 six or seven there's, there's a lot more than 12 pubs but you know if you pick 12 pubs probably four to five will have live irish music and um, from people singing to people just having a trad session um with you know fiddle and and flute and general irish instruments so a really really big part of our culture you'll see buskers out on the street especially in the cities like galway and dublin and belfast uh, and of course proximity I know uh, for this tour, you'll be going by Montreal, I believe, John, is it? I think Toronto. Uh, Toronto, sorry. And it's only uh, about a six and a half hour flight um, from Toronto into Dublin. And on the way back, you're looking at about seven and a half hours in the air to Toronto. So uh, very easy to get to. Um, one of the closest stop off points when you go to Europe. Um, and it's very a comfortable flight uh, across the pond overnight. Uh, and then, of course, history and culture. So many people with Irish ancestry, over 5 million of us in Canada with Irish ancestry. And it's just really great um, to even like be going down the street and see the last name, uh, see the name of a street that's the same as your last name or same as your ancestors. Uh, lots of people will come to trace their ancestry and roots, but also just, you know, the history, the castles. You'll see castle ruins on the side of the road. You'll certainly visit a few uh, wonderful castles, 13th, 14th century castles along the way as well, and even get a chance to stay a couple of nights in one. So those are just some of the reasons uh, of why people like to go to Ireland. But of course, what it's all about is the memorable experiences, and you'll certainly get these in abundance um, on your trip to the Emerald Isle. I always like to start with a map just to give you an idea of how small Ireland is. A little bigger than PEI, but it's about a three hour drive um, from Dublin in the east to Galway in the west, and it's about nine hours from Derry in the north uh, to Cork in the south. So in a 10-day, two-week-long trip, you really can't take in most of the country, and this tour is a, a 11 days, 10 nights in Ireland, uh, and that is really a great opportunity to see a lot of the country. So if you look at this map and then match it with this map, you can see the tour will take in uh, most of the country. Um, it's a lovely trip up to the Giant's Causeway uh, on day three on day three um, but as you can see it's an anti-clockwise loop the number uh, at each of the green circles is the amount of nights in each places and um, so we do try to do stay two nights wherever possible which is just really nice to be able to really explore a place unpack and um, there are a couple of one night stays and these are just kind of stops halfway on the way down and um, to the next major stop but really nice itinerary and um, slower pace as well maximum 26 guests or 28 along with the um, target um, tour escort and um, so 12 days 11 nights and of course there's two departures there September 21st to October 2nd and then September 23rd to October 4th yeah and I'll mention uh, uh, the the number of seats we have left so again remember we started the, the 23rd uh, and that sold out very fast but we do have two seats left on the 23rd if you have any if you're on the tour and you have some friends that want to join you but we also have a new de a second departure that we added for the 21st of September and uh, we've got 12 seats left on that so Perfect. don't delay absolutely oh no. before you continue oh, yeah, Jonathan yeah. I just want to mention uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Lindsay's on there right now, and um, she's responding to your uh, um, to your messages. Uh, say hello, and uh, but if you have any questions for Jonathan after the presentation, I should have mentioned this before, but um, we will uh, we'll ask Jonathan at the end of the presentation. Perfect. Uh, and then that's I just listed kind of the inclusions on the tour just to give you an idea of what's included. And um, so obviously John has included your flights. Uh, in the pricing here and then you'd also get 10 nights in first class hotels and um, so a mix of five stars as well as deluxe four stars as well as two nights in Kilronan Castle seen in the background there 
I'll talk a little bit about the accommodation now, which is definitely a highlight of the trip. It is a kind of slower paced itinerary. So it's really about the, the beautiful properties you stay in. As I said, maximum 26, 28, maybe with the Target Tours Escort. Um, and it's a really, really nice itinerary. Breakfast is always included. Uh, so in some of the hotels, it'll be a la carte menu. So when I was there a couple of weeks ago, some of the hotels are doing it differently. Uh, some will just have a full buffet style where you can enjoy all your hot food and your cold food and they'll have people serving the hot food and then other hotels will have the cold food where you serve yourself and then it's a la carte off the menu um, and that's all included of course uh, in the tour as well seven evening meals are included as well as um a lovely a lunch at a traditional irish pub a music session in the marine bar and a tour and tasting of a lovely dublin distillery that's actually a former church so uh, a really nice addition to the tour as well but as I said, the luxurious stays are definitely a big highlight of this trip, including the first two nights in probably the best hotel in Northern Ireland, the Culloden uh, Hotel and Spa, which is just a short distance outside of Belfast City. And um, so the first day we always like to be fairly leisurely, so you have plenty of time and um, to really enjoy the grounds and um, the leisure facilities here, the bar, the restaurant, everything about this. This place is a wonderful uh, addition to your stay. Um, so two nights to Culloden to start, then two nights in Kilronan Castle, and um, then a night in the lodge at Ashford Castle, and then two nights in the beautiful five-star Dunlow Hotel in Killarney, which is a stunning hotel, and that's new for this year. Uh, one night in the Granville Hotel in Waterford, which is a, another really, really nice um, hotel, and they do a fantastic meal there. Everything's locally sourced. I know they grow a lot of their own vegetables and things there, so really, really nice meal that you'll get there. And then two, two nights in one of the best hotels in the Republic of Ireland at the K-Club, and I have a picture of that to show you shortly. This is the room you can expect when you're in the Culloden. Uh, absolutely stunning decor, and really just gives you a taste of what's to come. And then Kilronan Castle, you have two nights, and you'll have fine dining experience in the restaurants on both evenings. Again, plenty of free time um, to explore the facilities here. I recommend going down to the Dungeon Bar, where you might get some live music. Um, but it's really nice just to, to wander around the grounds, especially if you get a nice day and uh, go out for a morning walk on the grounds as well. And then the last two nights in the stunning K Club, um, which was made famous internationally, I suppose, by hosting the Ryder Cup in 2006 and that uh, Europe won against the US. Uh, so it's a really, really beautiful property. It's about 30 minutes from Dublin City. So two nights here. And again, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy the grounds here, as well as doing a day trip trip into Dublin so you get to explore that as well so anything to add John or I'm just going to go through the day by day of the itinerary yeah go through the day by day I think it's uh, I think what sold this itinerary really was the accommodations and uh, as you can see right there I mean it's uh, uh, it, it's it was a it's a luxury tour right and that's what it's being sold as so um, and for a great price yeah absolutely um, so yeah, so the first day is always a kind of leisurely day. Obviously, everyone's come off an international uh, overnight flight. Um, so you're welcomed at Dublin Airport. You'll be met um, by the driver and the guide who'll be with you for the duration of the tour. And you'll be met at arrivals in Terminal 1 in Dublin Airport. Uh, you'll have a short um, walk then to the coach. And then after that, kind of porterage is included and you don't have to worry about your bags um, for the rest of the trip. You'll get them onto the, they'll get, you put on the coach and then you'll see them in each of your hotel rooms. Uh, every day when you're moving to the next hotel, you'll just be asked to leave your bag outside the room about 30 minutes before and the porters at the hotel, as well as the driver and guide will, will ensure they are loaded on and then brought to your room. Um, so you don't have to worry about them. Nice peace of mind for you. Um, there'll be a welcome breakfast on day one, which is a really nice stop. Uh, and it's a great way to kind of everyone to engage and meet each other. And um, before traveling north to Belfast, depending on, on the day, if it's nice weather, you might do a stop in somewhere like Carlingford, which is a nice seaside town, just to stretch the legs. And um, But we like to get to the Culloden uh, fairly early, so you have time to acclimatize, get an early dinner, uh, welcome drink, an early dinner, and then um, have time to just relax. And the touring really begins properly on day two. And, but dinner that night would be in the beautiful hotel there. Day two then is probably one of my favorite days in the itinerary, a lovely day trip up to the 
Uh, Giant's Causeway and traveling up the Causeway Coast route. That's the ruins of Dunluce Castle in the background there. So hopefully you have time um, to at least get a picture of this place. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, and that's about two minutes from the Giant's Causeway. I, I showed a picture earlier. I have a picture later of uh, my colleague John uh, there a couple of weeks ago on a beautiful sunny day. And then that evening, it'll be back to Belfast for some free time as well as a lovely dinner in a a famous central Belfast restaurant. So this is kind of the views you'll get on the Causeway Coast route. It's a stunning driving route uh, just north of Belfast, starting at Larne, going all the way up. And um, so we allow about three hours normally to go up there. And then on the way back, we'd normally take the, the less scenic route. And um, but it is absolutely stunning. Um, you can see Scotland on a clear day, which is only 20 kilometers away. And there'll be a chance to stop, I think, in Glengariff National Park, stretch the legs uh, en route up there and then uh, gung-ho up to the Giant's Causeway, which you will really want to spend lots of time at. Um, so it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site formed millions of years ago. These are basalt columns from volcanic eruptions, or if you believe Irish mythology, they're the footsteps of Finn McCool, uh, who was fighting a giant Ben Donner. And of course, you know, if you listen to the Irish people, he of course defeated Ben Donner. And these are his footsteps, but you'll learn a lot of that mythology uh, when you're there. The Causeway is a really, really nice experience. You'll have um, a guided tour uh, with a local guide to bring you down and tell you a bit of that mythology and tell you a bit of the geology of it if you don't believe the mythology. And you'll have plenty of time to get pictures and wander around and just really take in this breathtaking experience. Then on the way back to Belfast, you'll have kind of a free afternoon and evening. I recommend going to have a look at Belfast City Hall. Um, which is very centrally located, a lovely, lovely city hall um, built many centuries ago. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, and if you're interested in shopping, the likes of the Cathedral Quarter is a really nice place to go. Lots of little artisan shops and bars and restaurants around there. Um, and then you'll have a lovely evening meal that night in um, a local Belfast restaurant. Um, I'm sure probably on the way up or one of the days you'll do a bit of a panor panoramic tour as well. And you'll get a chance to see some of the murals. I actually took these pictures myself on a panoramic tour uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but it tells you kind of the, the dark history of Belfast, a bit about the troubles. Anyone watching the news um, may have seen Belfast and Derry in the news for all the wrong reasons back in the 70s during the times of the troubles. It all stems back to 1690. Uh, and the Battle of the Boyne when King William of Orange defeated his uh, Catholic uncle James. Um, and ever since then, there's kind of been a little uh, bit of religious um, tension, we will call it. And um, there's still a peace wall running through Belfast that separates Protestant and Catholic communities, 60 foot high, that was built by the British Army back in the late 1960s. It still stands today, but it's more of a, it's called the peace wall now. And it's more like a symbol of, of how far Belfast has come to think they would have closed the gates at night to separate the West and the East uh, Belfast. So you couldn't travel from Protestant to Catholic community. And um, so it's really great to see how far they've come. But these murals do tell the story. Uh, and when you're on your panoramic tour, our guide will kind of bring that to life for you. But it's really great to see how far the city has come. Um, and, you know, there's no trouble at all there in Belfast at all, and now has one of the youngest populations in Europe and a really buzzing and thriving city. Then day three, a lovely opportunity to explore Titanic Belfast. Uh, we got there last two weeks ago. We were the first guests there on the day, uh, and we give people a full two hours to explore this attraction. So it really is amazing. We got a nice group shot outside there. Um, but it tells the whole story of the Titanic, the faithful maiden voyage, but also about Belfast shipbuilding. Uh, it's very interesting. Anyone who's ever done a cruise or are very interested in ships, there's a very interesting exhibition now when you come in. It kind of talks about how the Titanic and the ships that were being built in the early uh, 20th century were really the inspiration for a lot of the cruise lines and the big companies um, to get into making these uh, magnificent large ships. Um, but obviously, it's a very sad story how it ends. And a lot of people uh, in Eastern Canada, I know in places on Atlantic Canada, um, would have either had ancestors who were on the ship or have some sort of connection. But it really is an amazing experience. Obviously, it was built in Belfast. It was opened in 2012 to commemorate the 100th anniversary. And it doesn't just tell the story, as I said, of the faithful maiden voyage. There's nine galleries. You see what it was like on board as a first class passenger, as a third class passenger. And it really is a very moving experience and definitely one of the highlights of the trip. 
So then this day, I'll also get a chance to stop in the lovely town of Enniskillen en route um, to something that you'll certainly enjoy on the tour, two nights in the beautiful Kilronan Castle. So again, we'll try to arrive nice and early that day, probably around uh, 4 p.m. So you have plenty of time to really explore the grounds and everything it has to offer before having a lovely fine dining experience in the hotel. Then day four is kind of like a short trip out to the west of Ireland to go to Donegal and Sligo and to get to, to explore a bit of Yeats country. So W.B. Yeats, the famous Irish poet, and wrote lots of his poems about the Isle of Inish Free and many other things out in the Sligo area. Uh, and when you do that day, you'll understand why he chose to spend much of his adult life uh, that, that he spent in Ireland. He would have spent out in the Sligo area because it's absolutely beautiful and stunning. And so you get a chance to explore that. Uh, you'll get a chance to see Ben Bulbin, uh, which people always compare to Table Mountain in South Africa. And um, that's Ben Bulbin. You'll see that in Yates country as you travel to Sligo um, from Kilronan on a lovely scenic day trip from there. And um, before heading back, and have plenty of time to explore the beautiful castle for another fine dining experience there at the castle. So those two are kind of a slower paced couple of days on the tour. Uh, after that, you'll then travel down to Galway on day five, get a lovely walking tour of Galway city. Uh, we use a lovely guy called Fiona there uh, who gave us a lovely tour a couple of weeks ago. And she'll tell you a bit of the history dating back to the Spanish Armada coming over in the 16th century and to some of the more uh, recent history to the pirate Grace Kelly as, as well. Uh, so there's a lot of very interesting history there. A lot of really good bars and restaurants too. Anyone interested in the famous Irish Clatter Ring? Um, so they're very famous and they're actually from Galway. So there's a few really good jewelers you can go to there and get your Clatter Ring. I know our group, we went into one of the shops and one of the ladies bought three Clatter Rings. She was buying them for uh, her grandchildren. Um, so a really nice place to do a bit of shopping as well. And you'll have a bit of free time to explore lovely Galway city before doing some uh, lovely uh, sightseeing in Connemara en route to Ashford Lodge. And these are some of the views you'll get in Connemara. Uh, we were there the other day. I always say like the Kerry region and Connemara region are kind of what people think of Ireland um, when they get there. And we had a, a fantastic day of sightseeing there. So you'll see lots of beautiful scenery and you'll see different colors in the, all the different parts of Ireland. You'll see some browns and some yellows in in the west in Connemara and it'll be much more green and lush landscapes as you travel further south as well and your first couple of days traveling through the Mourne Mountains on the way up to Belfast uh, you'll see lush green landscapes there as well. Then day six another highlight get to see the wonderful Cliffs of Moher seen in the picture there you'll get to explore the Burren region and the cute towns and villages in that area before heading down to Killarney and these are a couple of pictures I wanted to share that I took myself Hopefully you get as clear a day as I did, but it really is an amazing experience. We give you guys about an hour, an hour and a half there um, to really take it in. It's hard to describe in a picture how uh, wonderful and breathtaking a view it is. So, um, you know, just smelling the fresh Atlantic air and just viewing these cliffs. And, uh, you know, if you look all the way across, if you look really closely, you might see Newfoundland uh, 3000 kilometers across the water. <laughs> And then you'll also stop in beautiful, cute little towns and villages, the likes of Listoon, Barna, Doolin and La Hinch. And you'll definitely stop in one of them for your lunch. So um, if you can convince the guy to take you to Doolin, that's definitely a, a good option. There's some really good fish and chips there. There's some good little bars and restaurants and some cute little shops. And um, so that's about 15 minutes from the cliffs. But there's so many great towns and villages in the area and definitely another highlight uh, of the trip going here. Before heading down at two nights to Killarney, I was trying to find a good picture. I've been to Killarney loads of times, but I didn't have any good pictures of the streets. So the only picture I could find is Killarney at Christmas. So those Christmas lights uh, on top, you won't see them there in September. Um, but you get a kind of feel for the town when you see this. There's three or four streets. Uh, they're all kind of triangles. And so there's three or four streets like this, which will have you know everything from sweet shops to cafes to tea rooms. Uh, to bars, to artisan um, shops, to pottery makers. Um, but it really is a very vibrant town. It's our most popular uh, town in Ireland for visitors from Canada to go to. And spending two nights here, definitely another highlight of the trip. And you'll be in the beautiful Dunlow Hotel, uh, which is a beautiful five-star, just a short distance from the main downtown. Uh, then you have a full day tour of the Ring of Kerry as you get a chance to see landscapes like this in the picture. 
uh, after a beautiful breakfast with views like this in the Dunlow Hotel and Gardens uh, in your beautiful five-star property, which you'll be staying in for two nights. Again, no one of the highlights of the trip, definitely, uh, as John said, is the accommodation. And this is probably, uh, if not the best, one of the best uh, on the tour, beautiful five-star uh, in the heart of Killarney. And then you'll get beautiful landscapes like this in the Ring of Kerry. Uh, and again, stepping back in time, the Gap of Dunlow with views like this as well. Then you'll have um, a free, one free night in Killarney and then one included dinner as well. And then the next day is heading east towards Cork. So you'll get a panoramic tour of Cork City. You get a chance to go to the English market. There's a sweet shop in the English market scene there in the background, um, which is a beautiful kind of food market, a great place to grab your lunch and grab a few treats or some presents for family who haven't had the chance to go with you. And uh, then it's over to Blarney Castle for a chance to get the gift of the gab before heading up to Ireland's oldest city, Waterford, where you'll spend the next night. So getting the gift of the gab, uh, many of us already have it, but if you want to get it in Ireland, you have to kiss the Barney Stone, but it's not the easiest thing to do. You see in the top right picture there, you actually have to bend over backwards and be helped by uh, an employee at the castle to make sure you don't fall down the gap um, as you lean backwards in order to, to make the gap and to kiss the Blarney Stone. Um, so, but if you don't want to kiss the stone, the, the grounds themselves are just beautiful. Uh, Blarney Castle and Gardens. Um, it's really nice. There's a really nice cafe there. There's woolen yeah. mills you can have a look in as well. And it's really nice to just go explore the wall garden too. So really, really nice visit. And a chance I think, to Jonathan, to Jonathan, if I can interrupt you there. So we originally, this wasn't on the tour. And we had a request from some of some clients that were on the trip to see if we could stop there. And uh, so we, we've made that... Uh, We've made that choice to uh, make a stop in Blarney Castle. If you want to go and visit the castle, then I think you got to pay that on your own. Uh, and how much? That's about ten to twelve. Yeah. So I think it's um, it's, I think it's ten or twelve. I think it's twelve euro. Last time I was there to actually yeah. climb up the castle and kiss the stone. And um, yeah. but when we get there, it's free for everyone to go in, and explore the grounds and everything. So yeah. you have to pay that additional charge to actually go up and kiss the stone. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll get a, bit, a live music session in the Marine Bar, I know, in Waterford, where you'll get a chance to either have, I think, an Irish coffee or a pint of Guinness. And um, we're really nice before going to Granville Hotel, that beautiful hotel in Waterford. The Waterford City, as I said, is Ireland's oldest city, founded by Vikings in 800 AD. And if you do have a bit of time, uh, the Viking Triangle is a lovely area, and there's three museums there for any um, Viking history buffs. You could go in for a look there. Really nice addition to the trip. Then the next day is traveling north towards Dublin. And well, well you'll learn a bit about the famine um, when you're on the west coast of Ireland and um, Dunbrody famine ship, which you'll visit the first stop that day. Uh, it's a very important part of Ireland's history. Obviously there was over 8 million people living in Ireland in the 1840s. Uh, 1 million people died of starvation um, due to the famine. Uh, 1 million people emigrated. There's still less people living on the island of Ireland today than there was in the 1840s, which is incredible. Um, and this, this Dunbrody famine ship is a replica of the ships people would have traveled on uh, in search of a better life from the likes of um, New Ross in Wexford, where this is. Uh, they would have gone from Waterford, from Cork. Many people tracing their ancestries in North America will say, oh yes, I'm from Cork. Well, that's because 90% of people who emigrated, leaving for a better life from Ireland during the 1840s, would have left from one of three ports, Wexford, Waterford, or Cove in Cork. Um, and when they arrived in New York or PEI or Gros Seal, wherever they arrived, it would have just been stamped like they're from Cork, right? Um, so this is a very moving uh, experience to go and see this. There's an actor on board. She pretends she's a third class passenger. You see where the third class passengers would have stayed, it would have been 12, then one bed. Then you see what it was like on board for a first class passenger who wouldn't even have known there were other people on the ship. They're that separated from them. Um, but obviously they were known as coffin ships because many people wouldn't even make it across the water and because of disease and things. And they'd be thrown overboard and buried at sea. So a very moving experience. And your driver and guide will kind of educate you on this as you go. Um, but definitely a highlight for me as an Irish person whenever I go doing this Dunbrody family ship. So a really nice addition. 
before exploring the opposite side of Ireland uh, and the rich English houses that were built back in the day. Uh, I know Rusborough House is included, so you get a chance to um, get a lovely tour of the inside of Rusborough House and um, that would have been an old Earl or a Duke, I can't remember whose it was back in the day, um, given by the English government. Um, they would have given land in Ireland um, to people who were high up in the army and things as a reward for their service. Um, but you get a lovely tour and you see some of the incredible um, architecture inside there. Um, this is me on a guided tour a few years ago. There's some very famous art in there uh, and it's a really, really nice tour and a chance to explore the grounds there as well. Before, um, definitely another highlight of the trip, two nights at the beautiful K Club just outside of Dublin. So your first night you'll have dinner uh, and overnight. One of the best breakfasts I've ever had um, was I was at a friend's wedding here about four years ago. And I couldn't believe how good like scrambled eggs on a buffet. I, I've never tasted scrambled eggs like it since. I don't know what were in them. And um, so you certainly won't be disappointed with any of the meals you get here at the cake club. And you'll have two delicious breakfasts as well as one evening meal there. Day 10 then is a short trip into Dublin City. Uh, we have free time to explore before going to Pierce Lines Distillery. As I said, Pierce Lines Distillery is a really, really cool distillery. It's in an old church. Um, so it's really cool right in the heart of the city. There's a guy, uh, John Callaly, who works uh, for that. He kind of, he's a real big proponent for um, the rise of Irish whiskey again, uh, which obviously scotch is much more popular around the world, but there's been a resurgence in Ireland. There was, I think, four major distilleries about 20 years ago. Now there's something like 28, 29 little craft distilleries, Pierce Lines being one of them. And it's really cool that's in Old Church. Then you'll have time to explore the city, the likes of Trinity College seen in the background there, and um, but many other things to see and do, whether you're into shopping. And if anyone has any specific questions, um, you know, I'll be happy to give information uh, to John, which he can pass on, but the driver and guide, as you get there, will be able to educate you on many of the, the cool things to do in Dublin. That night then, you'll have a farewell hoolie, an entertainment evening. Uh, as you go up to um, the Abbey Tavern, just north of the city, uh, you get a bit of Irish dancing and music and a really great way to finish off the tour. Uh, I have a picture here of me at the Dingle Whiskey Bar. If anyone's bored of shopping or walking around, it's right opposite Trinity College and worth uh, going in for a taste of whiskey if you're thirsty on your, on your Dublin day. Then day 11 or day 12, I suppose it is, day 11 uh, in Ireland, day 12 of the tour, uh, airport transfer and then farewell for your transfer back to Canada. Um, some frequently asked questions, which I know many of you uh, might be asking in the chat, or John may ask me anyway. Uh, what's the weather going to be like in September and October? So you're looking at about 15 to 20 by day. You can get all four seasons in Ireland in, in one day, um, but generally uh, seasonally looking at a high of 20. Uh, at night, you might get about 10 or 15. Be similar. I, I was with John in, uh, in England in May a few years ago. John, be very similar to the weather we had on that trip as well. Um, so in Ireland, you're looking at the euro in the Republic of Ireland, which is about 155 to the Canadian dollar. And in Northern Ireland, you're looking at the pound sterling. Um, but don't worry if you don't know if you're in Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, because sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, if you're in any of the border counties, as they say, if you pay in euro and you're in Northern Ireland, they'll give you your change back in pounds, but it's normally OK. Um, so we always recommend having a bit of cash on hand. Um, but of course, credit cards are accepted widely, widely throughout Ireland as well. Um, and you have a lot of inclusions on the tour, but anything not included, you get a good pub lunch um, for 10 or 15 euro. And for dinner, you get a good dinner for 20 or 25 euro, including a glass of wine. Uh, and then in major cities like Dublin and Belfast, prices unfortunately are similar enough to Toronto these days for the pubs. Um, but in some of the small towns and villages, you might get a change from five five euro for, for a, a beer. You certainly wouldn't get that in Dublin, but in some of the small towns you would. And then in terms of the coach, there's a couple of long days. And um, the day from Ashford Lodge down to Killarney is a long day. But for the most part, um, very leisurely, you're three to four hours on the coach in any one day. Uh, frequent stops, as I say, there's a washroom on board. The coach is a 35 or 36 seater, so plenty of space on board as well. And they're very comfortable coaches. But again, Ireland being small, you're never traveling too far on the coach in any one day. Um, so that's just a quick overview of the itinerary. Thank you all for listening. I hope that was somewhat informative. 
Now there's the details again there, and John might have some questions or anything to add there. Over to you, John. Thank you, Jonathan. What a great presentation. Um, just a quick question on the on the coach mask wearing. Do we uh, is that required or is that optional? Yeah, so uh, for our tour, well, especially in the spring, we'll have to keep an eye on the situation. Um, but for example, I, I brought a group two weeks ago, and um, while masks are optional throughout Ireland, I did make them mandatory on the coach, and um, just to ensure everyone else felt safe on the coach. And I think, you know, as Canadians, we've all become quite used to wearing masks. Um, so it is, of course, we, it's hard to enforce, but we do recommend people wear the masks when they're on the coach. Um, other places when you go to bars and restaurants you won't see you'll see some people in Ireland but for the most part you won't see many people um, wearing masks but we do recommend them on the coach for sure and um, you know obviously we sold many of our, our tours this year based on the premise that you have to be vaccinated to travel on the tour so we will be requiring double vaccination still in order to yep. go on any of our coach tours this year. Yeah, that's a requirement of ours as well. And and just in my own experience, Lynn and I were traveling last week. We went on the cruise and, um, you know, we wore our masks when we weren't social distance, right? So especially in the airports, um, you have to wear your mask. So I, I think it's um, until until such time that uh, the COVID does go away, then I think it's going to be uh, some, a way to keep yourself safe. And that's what we're saying is that, uh, you know, protect yourself, wear a mask. Um, and hand sanitize, wash your hands. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good way to doing it. Uh, folks, if there's any questions, I don't have anything in the chat yet for questions, but um, just remember that we've got uh, a few seats left. So we got 12 seats left on the 21st and we've got two seats left on the 23rd. And uh, if you are interested in joining us, if you want to talk to us, I'm in the office tomorrow. Lindsay's working from home because of the, uh, the freezing rain warning. We don't want her skating to work. Uh, so she'll be uh, working from home. But you can email. Uh, if you email the info at targettours.ca, she will get back to you um, or myself. Uh, or if you want to book on it, just go ahead and fill out the reserve now. Um, book now and with all your information and we'll contact you for uh, for deposit and payment so thank you jonathan that was a great presentation uh, really enjoyed it really looking forward to uh to sending a couple of groups to ireland this this fall um hope things uh keep going in the way they're supposed to be going with uh, with COVID, and hopefully by uh by the time that we uh we get to september that it'll be uh it won't be a distant memory, but it'll be a less of a memory. Yeah, I guess. absolutely. A big thank you to you, John, for putting these two tours together. We're very excited uh, to bring you and everyone on, on here on the call uh, around Ireland in September. I know the Irish will welcome you with open arms. And we did, we did really get that feeling when we were there a couple of weeks ago, just how happy the hospitality and tourism industry were to see people from overseas back visiting. And they're very thankful for your business. So I know and um, they'll roll out the red carpet for you and be delighted to have you in September. Perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate this. Um, just a little reminder, we do have another Facebook Live next Tuesday. We've got Celebrity Cruises with Sherry Gonzalez and we've got some interesting departures if you're interested in cruising for this year and next. So take care, stay safe tomorrow if you're getting some freezing rain or snow. Uh, make sure that uh, you don't be on the highways if you don't have to be. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.